Um, does your truth encompass other truths as well? Um, people, I, I'm going to make quite a confronting statement now. Um, what I'm presenting is not my truth. Now, you are totally free to believe it's my truth, if that's what you wish to believe. But I, I can't take credit for any of the things that I'm teaching you at all. These are all the things that I've been taught myself through my relationship with God. So in other words, I, I feel what I'm teaching you is God's truth. Now, you don't have to accept that, and that's your call. You've got free will and you can... But you could also, just for a moment, conceive that maybe it is God's truth. Let's just experiment with it a bit to see yourself, you know what I mean? To determine whether you feel it's God's truth in the end. So what happens with most people is they initially hear me make the statement that this is God's truth, not my own. Many people go into a lot of judgment about that, thinking that I'm setting myself up as, as God or, or whatever. And that's happened for many thousands of years for me. But, but in the end, what I'm just saying is that these are the truths that I've learned from God and I'm, want, I have a passionate desire to teach. Now, you can choose to accept them or not or experiment with them or not. It's really up to yourself. Now, the people who have experimented with them and have actually done a lot of emotional work have found that the truth of it has settled in their own heart, independent of, my, of myself. So how many of you have actually had a personal interaction with me before this event? If you can put up your hand. All right, so there's... Exactly, so, so there's very few, right? How many of you have actually heard about the DVD, started to put it into action, started to put all of these different things that we've been teaching into action and found that some of your life has changed as a result of it? So now, of those of you, leave your hands up if you haven't had a personal interaction with me. So if you leave your hands up, so you can see how the majority of the ones who have been putting it in practice haven't had a personal interaction with me. Now... What I'm saying is you don't need to have a personal interaction with me to determine that what I'm teaching is true or not. What you need to have is a personal interaction with God to determine what the truth is. And God, through that interaction with you, will teach you the truth as well. And in the end, you will come to see that what I'm saying to you is the truth. But you don't have to believe that in the beginning. All you need to do is be open and willing to experiment with that and just see the changes that happen as a result. I see it as a truth. I don't I know hear you do. anything that you're saying that is not true. Um, I hear it as all true. But I it's just put, that I'll put to you something. Here's God, the yeah. creator of the universe. God knows the truth. Yep. Would you agree? Yep. If God um. is the creator of the universe, God knows every single thing about you, mm -hmm. every single thing inside of you, Every emotional error, every emotional purity, all inside of you, God knows mm -hmm. right at this moment. Mm -hmm. God also knows the entire truth of the universe. Every single law she created, every th single thing she created, the potentiality of everything that the laws create as well, God knows all of those things too. Mm -hmm. Would you not agree? Yeah. So I would say then, I could say then that God knows the absolute truth. Is that not the case? Yes. And what I'm proposing to you, just as a, something for you to consider, mm. is here's your soul. What's your name? Aaron. With two A's and R-O-N? Um, or is it Aaron? It's Y-N. Y-N. Yeah. So Aaron can personally connect to God and have God download to her the absolute truth. And then you will say, you will no longer say your truth, my truth. All you will ever be interested in after that point is God's truth, which is the absolute truth. Absolutely, but I see myself as one facet, and what, even though the truth itself is an absolute overall blanket truth, I am not an omnipresent being. I, I, you know, to the degree in this incarnation, the way I am right now, mm -hmm. if I'm mainlining, that's something different altogether. But I see that you hold a representation of God's truth through yourself as a vessel. Well, if you want to get technical about it, every single person in existence is, has a various degrees of God's truth in yeah. them. What I'm saying to you, though, is as you grow in love, right, the amount of truth that actually enters you as an individual will increase. 
right? And you, in the process, will get to the point where you become at one with God on truth, on the issue of truth. Yep. And you will no longer differentiate between my truth, your truth, their truth, but you'll only be interested in what is God's truth in this particular case. Yes. Right? That's all you'll be interested in. Yep. You won't even be interested in your truth anymore. You'll feel your truth, but you won't want to retain it while it's out of harmony with God's. That's absolutely true. Does that true. make sense? Yep. And so, so as you grow, so four, five, six, these are spheres or dimensional existence, all different in love. As you grow through them, what will happen is you'll become so focused on the absolute truth that you won't care anymore about what my truth is or the other person's truth is anymore. You'll be just so focused on what does God's truth it's in this situation. It's more linguistics though. Yeah. Yep. So, so rather than sort of worrying about the terminology so much, let's look at the fact that if I'm at this point here, then yes, I do have a limited amount of God's truth in me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm at this point here, I obviously have more of God's truth in me yep. and therefore can reflect more of God's truth and love to others in the process. So you're a cleaner vessel. Sorry? You're a cleaner cleaner. Yeah, I'm not claiming I am. I'm just no. saying that any person in this yep. place is automatically so. Yep. Does that make sense? So, so as I'm progressing in my truth and love, in my, the way in which I display truth and love in my life, I will find that I will look back down at the previous place that I was and I'll be able to say, yeah, what I thought was the truth back then, I now know isn't anymore. And what I, what I thought wasn't true back then, I now know is. Like I'll automatically be in that place as I grow. I just need to have a willingness to grow and I also need to have a willingness to let go of what I believe the truth to be at any one moment. So I agree completely that no person in the universe aside from God knows the absolute truth. However, as you get closer to God, you will automatically come to know more of God's absolute truth inside of you and you will no longer differentiate between your truth, my truth we will just finish up talking about what is God's truth and what isn't. And, and some of the things I've talked about with you today are my understanding of what God's truth is right at this point in time. Now, you can experiment with that yourself and find out whether, it, whether it's God's truth or not just by the amount of pleasure or pain you receive from working your way through the emotions about it. The key is to understand that if I'm willing to do this growth stuff, I will no longer worry about the semantics and I will, pro I will concentrate on the process. So in other words, I'll no longer try to philosophize about who's got what truth, what's going on. I will just concentrate on the process, which is as long as I get closer to God, I will automatically find out more of her truth as a result. And I'm not just talking about more of her truth about me. I'm also talking about more of her truth about the universe and how it works more of the truth about her laws, more of the truth about the principles, more of the truth about relationships and people and plants and animals and birds and, and all, these, all these different truths will come to me as a result of getting closer to God, not just the, what, what I feel the truth is at this point, moment in time. It will be, be all-encompassing in my life. It will change every area and facet of my life automatically. So you're not rejecting other perceptions of the truth i.e. other religions other philosophies etc certainly i do okay. i do reject some of them for example um the the uh, christian faith at the moment in many countries still has the idea that you can go to war with people who don't believe the same things you do now i reject that totally as the truth totally right now i don't reject the christians who practice it right i love them still but I reject totally that as a truth. Now, they'll tell me that it's a truth. There's another truth that many Christians say to me over and over again, and, and that homosexuality is condemned by God. Well, I reject that totally as a truth. Because of my experience, that, like my, the Apostle John, who you know from the first century, was a homosexual. And I know God never rejected him. So, so the truth is that I know God accepts homosexuality under certain conditions, and the conditions are based on morals, right? Are based on fidelity and other conditions, but, but there is certainly an acceptance there. So any Christian that comes to me and says homosexuality is wrong, I'm sorry, I reject that as not being the truth. And I will state that definitely. That is not the truth. Um, and 
And when you connect with God, every single person who does will eventually feel the same way. I can guarantee you. There are celestial spirits who are at one with God above the eighth sphere of the spirit world and they know for a certainty that God accepts homosexuality because God created it. Right? So, so at the end of the day, that's not a truth either. And then there's, whole, there's a whole faith, there's whole faith based around untruth. And certainly, yes, I do reject them as untruth. Um, but I don't reject the people in them, but I reject that they, they are, what they're saying is true, certainly. And I don't see it as your truth, my truth. It is either God's truth or not. That's how I see it. So I'm not even interested in my own truth. A lot of times, and sometimes my own truth is in error. Uh, and I'm not in, interested in that. I'm interested in seeing every error I have and then bringing that into harmony with God's truth as well. That's my personal desire. So, so at the end of the day, we won't be focused on your truth, my truth, my perception of truth, your perception of truth. The truth is, from God's perspective, once we become at one with God, we will have God's perception of truth. Right? And if we have God's perception of truth, then we won't ever argue about what's true, what's not after that, because we will know for a certainty what God's truth is in that condition. And, and that's the beauty of becoming at one with God, is that not only you, you, you resolve forever what is true. Now, of course, when you become at one with God, there's still more truth to learn. So you don't become God in the sense that you know everything God knows, but you do have God's truth in you up to that level that you've become. And so you know for a certainty what is true and you also know there's certain things to learn after that point about truth. So none of us are in a state where there's nothing to learn. All of us are going to be forever in the state where we're growing towards more truth because God has the absolute infinite truth and all I'm doing is getting more and more and more of that as I live my life. But I have the capacity to actually get so close to God in truth that I can state categorically that, for example, if a person chooses to back another person going to war, they are categorically in disharmony with love. And I can make that statement in full truth, knowing that I'm making the statement that's totally harmonious with the way God feels on the subject. Now, God still loves the people going to war, just like I would, but, but I don't, you know, God doesn't agree with the act, because the act is an unloving act. So that's the beauty of truth is that once you start sort of relaxing a bit on your own viewpoints of truth and start really getting attracted to God's viewpoint on truth, then you can rapidly change. It's when we stay addicted to what we believe is the truth or what we believe the truth to be, that's when we don't change. Because like I can be, a, for example, I can be a Christian sitting, sitting reading my Bible justifying to another person all the reasons why I should be able to go to war. Right? Because the Bible does have many of them sitting in it, right? And I can read, yes, you know, you know, God spoke to the Israelites and told them to go off to war against the Egyptians, you know? So God agreed with the war. So I can justify that from that reading. But if I connect emotionally to love, I can't justify that reading at all. So, so the, the problem today is that many of us stay addicted to what we want the truth to be. So, so for example... If I'm angry with a certain race of people because of what they've done to me in some way, I will then want to justify my violent actions back to them. And so I can do all sorts of things in that place. If I'm angry with women, I can justify lots of rageful acts towards them right, based on what they've done to me. But, but if I own my own emotions and I release those emotions and bring myself har into harmony with love, can I now justify those things? Well, no, I would could let, I'll have to let go of what I want to be true and instead accept what is the truth, that God views women the same way as God views men, and that is that God loves both, and therefore I need to. Um, so I need to get myself out of this angry, rageful place with women and into this place of, uh, of harmony with them. So once I allow myself to see and not hold on to my own beliefs, and see that I can change, then I'm not so addicted to even working out who's got the truth or not. I'm just, I'm just absorbing all these truths coming at me because the truth is every single moment in our lives, God's truth are hitting, hitting us all the time and we reject it because of our emotional condition because we have certain emotions that go, no, I don't want to accept that. 
inside of us. And if we give up that, we give up that resistance, what will happen is truth just enters us constantly as a result. <laughs>